Hi. I can't read this, but hi. <laughs> Hi Kyle, what's up? Hello, I can't read it but hi. <laughs> Hi Ruslana, hello. Yeah, greetings from Austria, thank you. Hi Blue, hello. In the background is playing Flo from Vladimir Rebikov, album The Peace Facile pour la Jeunesse, Jeunesse, which I played about four years ago. I can try to include this in the stream. It's gonna be a little bit crowded now, but here. This is the background. <laughs> no problem. Hello, S G A B R. <laughs> What's up? preparing to find some good pieces for sight reading. Actually, the pieces that are playing right now should be here too. Album de Peace Facile, is it here? Ah, here it is. <laughs> Hello, Wojta. Arto Cimero. Yes, I know him. I know that he is a very good pianist who has interesting, crazy goals like playing all. Um, Jean Amade Moreau etudes from the 50 etudes. I think he wanted to play all of them. I received notification from YouTube. I don't know why, but it's what I'm interested in. That's cool. Yeah. I play piano music on my channel, which is very unknown. And I do the score videos. And I play everything on this channel. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about sight reading, because that's a um, big thing here on my channel. Anyways, this is even the um, score to the background music here. We are, where are we now? Probably here. Here. Where the mouse is. Yeah, 60, 60 attitudes, right. Did you know that I played... I actually played an attitude on my channel. I played even several middle attitudes on my channel. For example, check out this Marine I played. Yeah, Ruslana, that's... 
Very nice. I really love Luz Luzenko music. It's so nice. Hi, Samuel. Um, the last pieces... Let me just pause for a second. The last pieces were from Vladimir Rebikov. And it was from this set of pieces here. Check out the title. Wait a sec here. Album de piece facile pour la jeunesse. jeunesse. Easy pieces for the young. The, I just put this as background. But we had the discussion about Miro and this is a piece by Miro that I played. You can see it also. Let's have a listen a little bit. We'll let you know it, thanks. <laughs> yes, yeah, Samuel, we'll go back to Levikov in a, in a moment. Okay, then you know my interpreta interpretation. This has been three years ago, my goodness. Oh, time flies. Did you also know that I played the Elegy? This is a very old upload, four years ago. <laughs> 2018. And I even orchestrated the, or I, I mean, I, I typed in the orchestration. I haven't listened to this in a long time. Hello, LB, how are you? Fine, thanks. Hope you're fine too. Hi, Naval. How are you? Nice to see you. Okay, so this is the orchestral thing. Let's go a little bit. Favorite composer? I have to think about that. <laughs> Let me think. I'm why listening? Really a piano concerto style opening. Hi, R. Williams. Hello. Hope you're fine. Hi, Luis. I wanted to say that I'm a big fan of Michelle and Brazilian. I really like the Brazilian music with Chelsea Great Service. Yeah, thank you. Thank you a lot. Um, I do my best. Let me just pause. I have problems with um, music from South America, Brazil, and other countries because they have a very distinct style of performing because I often listen to um, very known pianists um, and then I feel like they play it so differently than what our European ears used to hear and um, yeah maybe I'm thinking of an example I wanted to play some Brazilian music recently but it's the um, performances by the great pianists they sounded so different to how I would play it I thought oh if I played like European people from Brazil they will not like it if I played Brazil people from Europe will not like it so <laughs> it's, it's difficult but yeah just a couple of pieces from Brazil and from South America and that's fine um, hi Pawn hi Clavia hello hope you're all doing well about the favorite composer question the uh, I want I answer I like to answer questions like this by saying that it depends on the time. At some time in my life, this composer is my favorite. Pr I would say at some at some point in my life, Alcan was my favorite composer, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the music itself is 
the best music, but it really changed a lot in my life regarding acknowledging virtuosic music and diving deep into playing hard pieces. So it just changed a lot in my life. So it's an important composer to me. And um, yeah, there are many composers who have a high meaning in my life. But from the music itself, I think um, I cannot say this composer is the only one. But I have to admit the very known composers are just great. I'm all, all of them. Um, especially Chopin, of course, and um, Bach, but all the other ones too. So I think I would answer it like this. Arte Chimiro has already recorded done. Oh, he okay, he has, but he has to choose the best one. It takes much time. He's in China now. He started to do videos on YouTube a few weeks ago. Arte is... Ah, he's from Brazil. Ah, yeah, that's cool. Okay. I haven't checked his channel, really. I can do that right now. He's very active. Okay. He has master classes. Very interesting. Hello, I am Arthur Simir, the Ottoman artist. And today we are going to speak about Alexander Scriabi, Opus 9. So he goes through of the course, pieces. You can make less or more. But the fact is that when you have the ending of a phrase, it's better if you scores. There was also a the score example. And you have a rest after this, a silence. And a wait. Wow, very cool. Thanks for the... I, I'm gonna subscribe even to this. This sounds very useful. Very useful for learning the pieces by an absolute prof professional pianist. Um, so thanks for the discussion. Um, hi, Jameson. Hope you're fine. Thanks for stepping by. I recommend you to listen. Yeah, Ernesto Nazareth. I played also by him, I think, some pieces. Oh, I did not. Okay. I thought I played some pieces by him. Apparently I didn't. But I have played a lot from him. I don't know why I didn't upload. Uh, I should do that. Thanks for the tip. Uh, you're also... <laughs> everyone is from Brazil. Okay. That's that's funny. Taneev's book on convertible counterpoint, he attempts to describe the rules of movable counterpoint as a mathematical proof. That's very interesting. So maybe most of you know that I'm um, a mathematician with my day job. I have a doctor in mathematics and I work at the university. And so this is very interesting to me. A, as a mathematical proof, proof, that sounds really interesting because a proof is basically um, nothing else than trying to convince someone of a statement in a in a logical way. That's a proof. Like I can state something, statement A, and the other person might say I don't believe it. Then the pr I, then the proof is there to um, logically co conclude from A that uh, or from known facts that statement A does hold. So if there is something like this convertible counterpoint, then there must be a statement that has to be proved. Describe the rules. The rules of movable counterpoint. That sounds, yeah, it's a complex topic, I guess. I'm not really an expert on counterpoint, but probably it's even on IMSLP. Uh, if I just, I'm actually, I'm already on IMSLP here. So let me check Taniev. And we should start talking about side reading at some point because uh, but I really enjoy the the live stream so far. It's very fun to um, get all this input input from you. There is a public domain English translation. Yes, I would have guessed that. So maybe it's in books here. Yeah, convertible counterpoint in the strict style. It's 80 megabytes, so 400 pages. My goodness, this seems to be the original in, in Russian. But public domain, yeah, by Googling, you might pr probably find it. Um, yeah, I think I won't go into detail here, but that sounds also like an interesting topic to study. Um, but I'm not I'm not playing enough fugues at all. I haven't even played all the well-tempered clavier, to my shame. <laughs> I admit that. I haven't played all of them. And 
I have to really at some point finally start learning every one of them because that is so basic uh, it's like the milk for babies you are doing a degree in mathematics very nice hope you're doing great and you can finish it would love to see a video if it interests you the Russian version yeah yeah the Russian version public domain translation recommendation interesting yeah that's um, that's a good topic and um, I'm not sure if because my problem is I don't really know what people are interested in in this channel so I normally don't do anything else than score videos um, at some point I did the Cherny thing which I thought is also interesting did I do it? Oh, um, where did I do that? I thought I did a long video about, um, yeah, here, learn to go through. I went through the Opus 500 from Czerny. I started at least. So that's interesting te technique here. And he says that's his, um, um, his experience. And I would give a lot about Czerny's experience, to be honest. Yeah. So I play the oops. Hey guys. Sorry. I play the examples here. Hi. And I just go through the most interesting parts of Chani's Opus 500 book because that is not only about counter counterpoint, it's about everything about piano playing. So that should be of interest for everybody, especially given that Chani is really a very uh, important figure in the in the music business. Association As exercises. Absolutely everything but yeah that was a project I did but counterpoint is another thing that can be done are you going to play palmgren I think I played already I played some palmgren at some point yeah I played one two here are actually three pieces four five no here I played eight pieces I played already 13 pieces by palmgren so okay this was even a live recording apparently with a lot of background noise. <laughs> yeah, but did I do also normal videos? Yeah, this is a normal, normal video. From which country? It's from Finland, right? Yes. It's a Finnish composer. It's really very cool. I don't know a lot of Finnish composers, honestly. I think I'm going to go back now to the Rebikov for background. Actually, I think we don't need a background, maybe because I have a topic which I want to talk about. Let me just read. Jenny made some interesting footnotes <sighs> of Reicher's harmony. Anton Reicher, I also have heard of. I haven't played, I think, anything course of musical composition yeah I mean there are really many books which you can read and study um, this is kind of too much time um, which I don't have because it's not my main um, if I w if I were a musician I would do I would read things like that but I have my job and everything so I have really not I just have the time to play some pieces um, Chinese nocturnes are most sadly underrated this is completely true since they became before the likes of Chopin and after Field. Yeah, that's also true. Um, I mean, technically it's my thing, but again, there are factors like time and also if, it, if it's interesting to the channel. But um, I will remember the two books you suggested by Taniev about Counterpoint and about, and the Chandy book about, um, in a Chandy's translation, Reicher, isn't Reicher German? I don't understand. Anton Reicher is, isn't German? Or you... Oh, Czech... Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay, I, yeah, he is Böhmische. Czech-born, Bavarian-educated, later naturalized French. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Czech-born, Bavarian-educated, later naturalized French composer. Okay, very nice. But yeah. Hi Martin, uh, I got my thanks for all the content. Yeah, thank you for listening. Glad you like it. He was a friend of Beethoven. Yeah, that's that's his time. He was really the early classical period. 
I'm a classical pianist who attempted to play Chinese nocturnes. They're incredibly hard to find, almost impossible. Um, Chinese nocturnes, many of Chinese works are hard to find, but uh, yeah, I haven't also gotten very smart on that, but I know that there are some. Mm, I think the Gallica is a good resource, gallica.fr, for things like that. But there are Dropbox kind of style pages on the internet which contain a lot of Jenny. But yeah, maybe I won't go into Gallica right now because whatever. Hi Xiv. Yeah. I'm with the face cam and everything. And I think I will now start to talk about the topic. Let's see how this goes how many people are here because um, I have no plan on how long to do this. It doesn't have to be very long as always. Um, so sight reading is something that concerns many people because um, if you are a good sight reader, then obviously you can grasp, understand, structure and analyze a piece at a, um, yeah, at a fast pace. And um, you can also um, play a lot of pieces in a relatively short period of time, which is the main reason that I can basically upload a new piece every day. And um, the question that many people therefore have is how can I study my sight reading skills or can I do something to be better at that? And I have thought about that a lot and also, and this is by reflecting how I do my uploads, um, why I can can play videos so fast and I think so to make it short and to say my main theory is um, you get a better sight reader if you if you play a lot of music so if you listen and play to a lot of music you will become a better sight reader and the argument for that is that you can think about what your brain and what you do while you try to side read a piece or play a piece, a new piece. And our brain doesn't really work like a computer where you have your CPU and um, you look at the score and process everything in the same way. Because what we do is we remember things that we have already played we remember things that we have already heard on YouTube, on CDs, in a concert. And by all that knowledge, this is helping us to make it easier to play something new, which sounds maybe similar or which goes in, this, in a similar direction. So every piece is different from each other. There is no 100% copy, um, but let's maybe focus on the example of waltzes. For example, you see Chopin's waltzes and you're at the beginner's level or at the intermediate level and you hear a Chopin waltz recording and then you think, wow, I want to be able to play that. So you sit down, you download the score and then you maybe find, oh, it's pretty hard to play that uh, at all and even especially at that high tempo. So my theory there is your sight reading of the Chopin waltz will be better depending on how much waltzes or waltz related pieces like mazurkas also if you want you have played in your life and if you've played many of those kinds of pieces then it will be easier for you to capture all the um, data which is always kind of similar in a waltz so let's start with something something very similar as easy i mean for example that a waltz is in three quarters time if you've played many pieces in a three quarters time, so maybe many waltzes, then uh, in your blood there will be a certain um, affinity to that kind of measure. So it will be easier for you to one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, if you've played many waltzes by maybe unknown composers, maybe contained in some sets of children's pieces, where the waltzes in there are often kind of archetypical, of what a waltz is about, but often in a um, low difficulty, lower difficulty than these concert waltzes from Chopin or similar, 
if you know these kind of pieces, then you know that the left hand has always a similar structure. You have a bass note and then bop, bop, boom, bop, bop. You have a right hand where which plays the melody. You have harmonic progressions, which are often very similar. Um, and you, c I mean, it, it's also helpful if you know a little bit about music theory, what a tonic is, a dominant and things like that. But even if you don't know that, in the end, the experience will help you to um, have a set of harmonic language already in your head if you see that a piece is, for example, in A flat major. So you have a new waltz, it's an A flat major, and if you have played already many waltzes before, your sight reading will be better now because you are cert you're in some sense prepared to what's going to happen now in this piece. So you know that the measure is three quarters, and if you played waltzes before, it will be easier for you to adapt to that. You know that the harmonies that will appear now in the first measures are almost certainly going to be D flat major or E flat major or um, F minor, things like that. And if you have that background, if you have that kind of knowledge already, you have more room left in your brain to focus about really playing the melody and to focus about um, uh, dynamics or whatever else. So sight reading is going to be hard if you have to process everything at once. But if your knowledge is there, then it's going to be easier. So let me just read a little bit comments before I go on. Uh, yeah, I played also Luis Calvo. I played his works also. Look, I played Intermezzo 3, Intermezzo 2, Lejano Azul, Adios a Bogota, Angelos, and so on. I played a lot of from him. You can check it out, but I'm not going to do it now. Uh, but I like his pieces a lot. His very, I remember them to be very, very nice. Um, South American Gamma played. Yeah, 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 okay, you discussed about that. Chinese Nocturnes, yeah. Um, very rare, you quote it, you play it. Okay, so um, I think I will just take the freedom to drink a beer. Um, so these are some basic elements for sight reading. I usually think of sight reading as a, as a grind, but knowing what to expect is helpful. Um, have you tried playing Mercusio arrangement? I never heard of that. Is he on IMSLP? Apparently not. Maybe I mistyped. No. Okay, I don't know what Mercusio arrangement is. You can elaborate on that if you want. Um, so yeah, that's basic about um, some basic stuff about sight reading, I would say. Um, this holds for many, many categories in music. For example, waltzes, mazurkas, nocturnes, reveries, berceuses, also lullabies, um, fantasy pieces, elegies. So if you, and that's what I did in the beginning of my YouTube channel, where I went to IMSLP, like here, and I went to the category for piano. So you can Google IMSLP for piano, then you go, go to this page. This page contains 10,700 entries, which are all, all piano pieces on IMSLP. And then you can go to sort this list, and then you can sort this list by different styles of pieces. For example, and what I did when I started the channel was Caprice. And I actually remember that back in 2017, there were only 550 Caprice, I think. So now we have already 820. So um, yeah, it's worth to go through all of them again. But what I did is I went through all pages, all 500 whatever pages. And I, pl I, tr I wanted to play all Caprice that IMSLP has that I thought were nice and I wanted to play. Now, Caprice is not really a form that has a lot of specifics to it. So this is maybe not very useful regarding sight reading. 
but if you go to nocturnes then this is much more useful and here you have now all nocturnes which are um, noted here as separate nocturnes and if you go to something random like this one here let's see how this looks this is now from Alfred Lebeau Jean Dadieu so someone is saying goodbye and look this was complete I chose this completely random but you can see here that the tonality is pretty much exactly my example tonality um, which I used. Okay, I used it for waltzes, but for nocturnes we have similar harmonies. So we have A flat major here. And um, what you can see here is that the left hand plays these broken chords, which is something that almost all nocturnes have in common. And um, they will change in harmony, but the harmonies they use are also basically already determined by our tonic here, by A flat major, and the right hand has a melody um, that fluctuates in, in rhythm and also in um, accompaniment here and so on. So, so obviously this is a pretty difficult piece to side read, this is not like super super easy piece to side read, but the only point I want to make here Actually, this piece even looks interesting, so I might maybe uh, make a video of it, you know. But um, going back to the point here, um, nocturnes have a lot of parameters in common. And I think a true book about, si if I would write a book or something, I would try to find out for a lot of these very known, and o I mean, let's be honest, most people, they want to be able to sight read nocturnes or waltzes or things like that. I think not many people want to be able to sight read a piano sonata or a fugue because um, that's very hard because piano sonatas have a um, and I uh, uh, so talking about classical music like really Mozart and Beethoven is again something different and I cannot say as much about it as about romantic romantic music because 99% of the music I play now on my channel is romantic music so um, everything I say is kind of restricted to romantic music um, but for example fugues are a good example where I also struggle a lot with sight reading so fugues are always showing me that um, there are definitely pieces that I cannot sight read very well for example, even something from Well-Tempered Clavier, um, because what I find difficult there is that not only if we take a fugue, not only do we have a theme, but this theme is repeated in different voices, which you have to find out and play louder than everything else. And then sometimes you have millions of accidentals and the measures are extremely long, so you have to remember millions of accidentals within the measure and sometimes scales end abruptly before they go back to this like if a scale starts at C then it goes up to the other C but because of the fugue it has to end at A or at um, B and in romantic music if you have a scale it will go through so you don't worry about that but there are just always these uncertainties which cause your brain's power and that makes it hard for me to side read and have you tried that's on youtube ah, okay yeah i'll check it out later i can say certainly that side reading for guitar exercise of processing of the techniques used because there's a lot of variables one piece can be played in infinite ways following the score okay that's another um, interesting dimension if you're on the guitar um i haven't played guitar in my life really so i um cannot relate to that to a nice extent so to speak but um, processing of the techniques used also um, applies similarly to the piano because um, we want to maybe find now a easier piece and therefore I want to go to the following thing I want to go to just pieces And a good resource for sight reading material, in my opinion, are 
pieces for the young or you know albums for the young children's pieces how they are sometimes called and here we have I this is something I found earlier album for the young by Xaver Shavenka and if we have a look at this then this is also not very easy here um, so there are um, versions maybe I make it like this uh, this didn't help really a lot because the reader is so small but um, if we go to this is a tale th for example here we have a random piece as a set of pieces and this contains your abaca role and uh, yeah so if you want to be able to sight read well then you maybe want to play something like Chopin's Baccarole or things like that in D flat major. But this one is extremely hard. But this is a Baccarole that's easier to play. We see that it has nine eighths, which is a common meter for Baccaroles. We see that um, E minor is also a very common tonality. And we have here a basically kind of archetypical example of a Baccarole here. So here we can start by playing only the left hand. And then we see that uh, we are restricted to the harmonic language really a lot because we start with E minor, then we have a little bit dominant here, E minor dominant, E minor, E minor dominant, E minor dominant, then we have here E major a little bit, then we have C major. Uh, so we are playing a little bit around the spectrum of what is kind of related to E minor. So we had so far the dominant, we had E major, we have C major, and then here we have finally um, an A here and a D. So if we have something with an a E, then D and A are very similar, very uh, related to that. And here we have a B and so on. So by um, trying to side read this piece, we already have, um, we already start to collect some experience levels for what happens in a Baccarole. Now, if I do the same thing with other genres of pieces contained in such sets, so here is a Minuetto. What do we else have here? A Gavotte. These are more Baroque type pieces. Song without words. Um, Preludium, so a prelude. So this is a Schumann kind of piece, Scherzino, Andante, here's a Tarantella even. Yeah, so this is um, maybe not the most useful set of pieces, because a very useful set of pieces contains a waltz, then it contains a march, then it contains a mazurka, then it contains a nocturne, then it contains an elegy, then it contains a rev reverie, and so on. So. Um, if you have at hand a nice set or a nice list of these kinds of sets of pieces which contain pretty easy pieces which represent a genre and if you start to go through these kind of pieces and try to sight read them then um, your knowledge and your experience with these genres of music will increase with each set you go through. Uh, the, the difficulty is a little bit to find the sets of pieces that are useful to your current difficulty. And if I were to write a book, I would spend a lot of time to try to categorize all these millions of sets of um, these kind of sets here which are, exist and have been written to categorize them in different categories and, and say, okay, go through this. If you're at that level, go through this if you're at that level. So for example, this set here is basically, this is basically my level of sight reading in some sense. Um, I think I could sight read this, but it would be already, okay, it doesn't have to be really harder than that. Otherwise it would be just a little bit hard. Um, so maybe if I can't find something else here, we have here album for the young from a German composer. Okay, unfortunately we have only one piece on IMSLP. Here is another one. So, okay, <sighs> this contains fifty-seven pieces. This is actually a modern, um, modern composer. So, 
let's really restrict to kind of romantic composers. Here also we have only two pieces. Um, Yeah, so these pieces are nice, but they don't have a name. I want to kind of find a set of pieces which also is named. And by the way, a lot of Russian composers composed um, a lot of pieces for for the young, which are very useful for this kind of thing. Um, so maybe I can go to... Um, and go here and go to I don't I forgot what the name of the chair because he changed the uh, Alex from L Ali 07.ru I mean I can just go on the side directly so we go to piano and then we go to children's albums exactly and here we have now a lot of pieces for beginners pieces. Um, okay, many comments. Let me just have a look. No problem reading hands separate, but struggling to read hands together. Any advice would be appreciated. Um, yeah, that's another issue. Then if you can if you can um, read hands by themselves, how can you improve re playing both at the same time? Um, I think there are many possible issues. So maybe it's the rhythmical arrangement that's a problem. Maybe it is the um, just having to do too much at the same time. I can relate to that because I played organ at some point. And I can really tell you, playing with the foot, with my feet, completely threw me off. I could play with my hands, everything, but just having to play even a couple of notes with my feet, I couldn't do anything anymore. <laughs> so I know that I know what you're talking about. And um, to be honest, I haven't thought about this specific issue. Um, what could help there? Um, yeah, I think most useful would be to go through concrete examples of pieces where you could show me, okay, you struggle here of playing uh, both hands simultaneously and then I could see, okay, what might be the problem for this piece. Um, because I think I cannot say a general solution for all pieces. Um, so if I would like to be able to play better organ with my feet, I think I would just try to play a lot of music for the organ, um, which suits my difficulty level, wh whether, whether feet have to do really nothing else than just play one note or something like that, because it would be just too much otherwise, and start to get a feeling of incorporating my feet with my hands together while playing. And if you have both hands at the same time, I think it's also similar. Um, yeah. How can you accelerate that progress? That's a good question. Um, maybe there are also specific pieces you can look at that uh, if you go through them, um, sight reading in that regard will also improve. But I wouldn't actually know right now which pieces. This is not genre related, really. Um, yeah, so I would have to think about that. Maybe I think about something else later. But good question. That's something I haven't considered so far. Um, yeah, I don't know. De Vola M. Don. Ah yeah, there is a, uh, this is a piece, this is one piece in F minor. It also has nine eighths rhythm and um, yeah, the left hand has a very repetitive pattern. So 
um, by starting to understand how that pattern works, we already have, we have two measures time to get used to that pattern and then it goes on and on and on, but then the right hand starts. Also only with FFF, so there is not much to do here, and then the complexity starts to increase. And playing here both at the same time, I can see that this is starting to become a problem here. Um, but again, yeah, I cannot think about why, what the problem is to play at the same time. I just would have to talk to you, <laughs> to be honest. I would have to ask you and then explain how what the problem is so that I could understand it better, I think. But yeah, this looks like a good piece, yeah. True. Especially things like that here. Oh yeah, what is this? What what is this? Très au loin, les cloches d'église de Rome. This looks annoying to side read. <laughs> But this is very open. Just uh, yeah, what's clush in English? Clocks? No, <laughs> the thing in the in the church. But anyways, uh, responses. Hi Daniel, hello. Struggle put you as rhythm exercises. Yeah, it might be rhythm, but I don't know um, if that is the main problem from the one from the person who asked. Yeah, this looks like a very peaceful piece. I'm having a hard time, hard enough time copywriting a Bluetooth page turner, let alone a whole pedal keyboard. Yeah, many people suggested that to me, but honestly, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't um, also, yeah, dealt with that because it seems annoying to buy something and fiddle around. I'm just too lazy for that. Hi, Ilya. Hello. Good evening. Good evening to you too. Um, Maybe let's have some samba in the background, right? Since you're here. So Ilya, who just entered the chat, is the composer of this piece here that I played. You can just play it a little bit here. So I will go back here for the children's pieces. Thanks for the hint. Um, I'm not really talking right now, but thanks for... I will remember that. I think in this case I really like my live performance even better. So let's go back to the to the topic. <laughs> so I ah yeah there it oh, oh this is a little bit annoying. I have this open now in the PDF reader. So let's add another window here. Uh, yep, this one. Okay, so this is what I just. Yep, the live performance is pretty nice. Although the audio quality is not as good, but anyways, I have now downloaded basically a random set of album 
also of um, children's pieces here from the Russian side. And yeah, this is definitely not the easiest um, representative. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Ilya, that you say that. Your your piece is very nice, so you really blessed us with that. Very cool. Really cool piece. I like you performance with your wi wife, right? On the uh, four hands, one piano, right? This is also a very cool recording. <laughs> I always li like to listen to it. Uh, yes, it was on concert. Very cool. Um, okay, so this is... This is obviously not very easy. Um, I want to find something better than that. Yeah, chorus effect, that's true, because of face issues and things like that. So, here we can see that um, I have a very big side of... Um, pieces which are supposed to be children's music. These kind of sets of pieces are normally arranged in such a way that the difficulty increases throughout the book, which is very useful because um, you have a learning process and you can see that these books have extremely many pieces in them. And uh, I can maybe try now this one here. Oh wait, was it was it the one I just had? <laughs> uh, five. No, yeah, this is two. Ah, yeah, this okay. This is a, se a series of things. So this is book one, this is book two, this is book three, book four, and so on. So maybe it was hard because I was in book six of something. So let's see if this is no easier. <laughs> Ah, okay, this is now a direct here. Yeah, this looks a little bit better. Still not like very easy. So we have a waltz here. Um, using a little bit unusual language here. So these kind of harmonies are not very easy uh, at first glance. But you can see here, these pieces are very short. They are not, not too long. Uh, for example, the second piece here has a very slow tempo and um, yeah we can um, we have a lot of time to figure out what's going to happen in each measure so if I were to sight read this I would start here and note recognition is some another thing so for me the note recognition is high like I can uh, immediately see kind of what note is meant here without really having to think for each note itself. Okay, wait, this is an A, uh, this is a D. Okay, this is... So basically what I see here is I see D minor in the first thing here. Yeah, because um, I see an A, I see a D, I see an F, and in my head this already collapses to a D minor. So yeah, I can basically play kind of like D minor except this E here. And now I'm prepared that something along the lines of D minor, A minor, uh, C major, something like that is going to happen. And then we go on here. Da, da, dum, and um, yeah, then I would just play the the notes up here. We have a rhythmic, um, rhythmic thing here. But apart from that, the rhythm and the whole piece is pretty steady. So we don't have to worry too much about that. I have to, of course, keep in mind that we have a global B accidental here, and yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I have seen a question. Do you think it's worth practice technical exercises of common cadences, chord progressions, or just focus on sight reading? I think it's definitely useful, um, but it has to be. It has to go hand in hand with the sight reading practice of trying to go through many pieces which are around about your current level. Um, yeah, so because the advantage of learning about chord progressions is um, that it will definitely help you if you want to play classical or romantic music, for example, because they follow 
very often um, these these kinds of harmonic language. So um, by doing by doing chord exercises, chord passages, your brain will be kind of ingrained at some point to know that okay, this is a common good sounding progression. This is a good sounding progression. And if you play some random piece like uh what's a good example yeah maybe here then i see this is an f major and um so here uh yeah this is maybe not actually a really good example because the left hand just has a kind of modal <laughs> harmonic language here but yeah let's say here so if i start this piece here then this is basically C sharp minor and if I do chord progressions then I would know that what sounds good for example after C sharp minor is you know maybe the dominant G sharp major but what also sounds good is just G sharp minor and here in the second measure we have G sharp minor and then we go back to C sharp minor here and then we have A major so after C sharp minor A major works good so by doing these uh, chord progression exercises in your brain, you kind of start to already know without really thinking about it, but okay, A major, A major might happen now because it would make sense. And then really what happens is, yep, we have A major here. So in that sense, I think it's useful. And yeah, Ilya composed the samba, right? We played it earlier. Hi, Olga. <laughs> Um, and the common cadences is just a technical aspect. Of course, just purely technical aspects also play a role. Um, for example, playing a scale or something like that. Um, I have, I went, I never went through books really studying scales, to be honest, although it's very good to do so. But sometimes I sit at the piano or when I listen to a boring math talk, I just play the scales on my table you know, like this. So I can just study everywhere. You know, if I sit on the plane or on the train or whatever, I can always study the scales because studying scales is basically where do you put your thumb under the other fingers or where are the flats and the sharps, basically. It's just only about remembering the configuration of the scales. And if you practice that a lot, a lot, a lot, then it will be easier if you sight read something, there's a little E major scale. You don't have to think about every note and then play everything with a second finger, but yeah, you can just play the scale easier. How far ahead do you think when you're looking? How do you go about? Okay, the first question, how far ahead? It depends on the piece and the difficulty. So for example, I don't know, let's n take something else. Okay, this piece. So. Um, I never look more than the next measure, I, I would say. So uh, in this te in this piece, the tempo is also quite high. It Maybe it depends on the tempo too. Like if the tempo is slow, is there some example here? Allegro, allegro, lento. No, I think I wouldn't. I think I never look more than, I look in the measure I'm at right now and I look one measure next, I would say. Um, and then how do you go about taking in both bass and treble clef? Um, if I go through this piece now, my table. So what I do is I think, uh, for example, in this piece here, let's look at this passage here. Wait a second. Let's this passage here. I cannot mark it, but there is a passage, sorry, which where the right right hand plays the dum bum 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 and the left hand plays dim bum bim bum bim bum bum. Um, shortly before we play both together, I hesitate a little bit. So if I exaggerate it, I do like jam bum jam bum jam bum jam and before I play both together, this hesitation gives me a little bit time to see, okay, Am I now really playing the notes I want to play here? And then I can go on with this eighth note, dim, bum, and then I hesitate a little bit and then I can play both. And 
this maybe helps to give you a little bit more time here if you cannot immediately uh, figure out the how to play both um, and then here we change the harmonics to apparently what is this this is probably G minor here so a big harmonic change and um, this piece is also doesn't have a lot at the, this piece has a lot at the same time so yeah so maybe if you can describe kind of what the problem is for you or if you can articulate it then I can um, um, yeah get into the way you think a little bit more and then I can with how I f feel compare with that and then maybe give an advice something like that because yeah um, it's hard for me to um, answer that question right now because yeah I can just I can just do it <laughs> so I uh, I don't like I don't know why but if I just play it's maybe because I have just played tens of thousands of pieces and then um, this looks a little bit like like uh, you know Beethoven if you want or there have been just many pieces composed which use this kind of pattern and if you look at the right hand then there are harmonies which like this is D sharp minor this is F sharp major and you know I know that they end here and that the left hand has to be here at this point so for me it's not hard to play this here and then it has to end here at the D f at the D sharp and then the left hand has to be here with its little left hand thing um, but this is maybe also not do we have something where it's really hard well really the left and right hand play completely different things um, I mean look at this look at this book how many pieces there are in this book and check it out the pieces are so short these are really excellent sight reading exercises remember thinking about scales while ignoring my friend <laughs> yeah French lessons I wish I wouldn't have ignored them so much because then my French would be better but um, again this is only one book here and if you check this page then you can see this page itself is 10 kilometers long and then again this is not the only page on this whole website so just here you have probably literally thousands of quite easy kind of good sounding pieces which are character pieces sad tune spring mood a little march a little waltz a little whatever so if you go through this then you get really already a good feeling for um, what you will see in a larger scale in Chopin's pieces or uh, list or things like that but yeah um, there are limits to just playing a lot of pieces in a rather short because you, what you also have to see is in sight reading um, basically sight reading is at the beginning of the process of learning a piece so I see a new piece, I want to play it, then I have basically um, the question of sight reading the piece. Then I learn the piece, I learn the piece, I learn the piece, and then we start to get in this range of, okay, I can kind of play the piece with a lot of mistakes, okay, I can play the piece at tempo with a lot of mistakes, okay, I can play the piece at tempo with m few mistakes, but the dynamics are off, until the point where we really reach the perfection. I can play it up to speed with perfect dynamics, with well thought out phrasing, with a well thought out interpretation, which is maybe new to everything everyone has seen before because I'm so clever and I thought about this and everything. But the problem is if, and we all want to be able to play pieces perfectly, 
But the problem is um, that there is just not enough time for most people, except you're really a very invested music student or something like that, or a professor, uh, you d just don't have the time to perfect every piece to that level. So um, in order to have this con to maintain the joy of playing piano, in my opinion, it just makes more sense instead of just breaking your brain about one piece for months to um, simultaneously improve your sight reading skill by accumulating this knowledge of how music normally works and also by listening to music so that you can um, so that you also see more music and also educate yourself by that by not just playing only Chopin and Mozart and Bach, but also seeing all the other composers. Also, my channel helps with that because obviously I play only unknown pieces. And um, gathering all this knowledge, and then this makes it easier to sight read something new because in your brain, hopefully, the synapses will go like, ah, I have seen a little bit in this piece before. I have seen something similar in this piece. I have seen something similar in this piece. So you don't have to think about everything while sight reading, but you can grab a little bit of this knowledge, a little bit of this knowledge. And uh, in my case, like this knowledge is high because I spent in the last six years almost one or two hours every day of my life to check out unknown pieces of which there seem to be infinitely many because I still haven't even checked one percent or something. Um, but what that did to me is, at this point, if I see a romantic waltz, I uh, cannot really be surprised anymore, which is a little bit sad. <laughs> but um, sometimes I think, do I even want to continue this channel? Because I have the feeling everything starts to sound the same. Like every romantic piece I play, that's how much uh, in my brain it's connected. It's really to that level where it starts to may even almost get boring because I feel like there is only so much stories you can tell within the context of romantic music and I have the feeling I have heard all of them already. Uh, which is of course not true, but sometimes it feels like that. So this is <sighs> kind of my struggle, but this is, doesn't have to do now really with sight reading. Um, but this just proves to me that spending a lot of time over the years and over over your time with checking out you know like in this page here la 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 blah 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 Nuyev, Karamanov, Schnittke you look you have even Schnittke here <laughs> everybody knows Schnittke maybe from the piano concerto or from from the opera or from this or that but he wrote apparently children's pieces isn't that super interesting <laughs> like if you want a side read why don't you go here download this have a look. Uh, I hope it's not a very, very hard thing, like um, like that this page actually contains uh, easy to medium difficulty pieces. And then, uh, you know, you have your little education also. So like, wow, I, play, I, can, I know this piece by Schnittke, um, because Schnittke is really awesome, but he composed also these kinds of pieces, and you can improve your side reading by that also. Um, on the other hand, these pieces seem to be here rather modern, so maybe they are not perfect for like super standard romantic kind of pieces. But um, again, as as I said, like if I were to write a book, I would make uh, I would spend a lot of time writing a list of pieces. Hey, these are good pieces for very you know standard romantic pieces. If you want to get better at that. These are pieces which help you to be better at fugues. These are pieces for this. These are pieces for that. And Bach Scholar, I think, I'll answer your question in a moment. Bach Scholar, I think, did the same with his book, right? Bach Scholar, side reading. Side reading and harmony. So maybe some of you know Bach Scholar. He's a YouTube um, creator. And... Um, so uh, I have it actually open here. Spascola side reading. Yeah, he has a lot of videos about it because he sells this book. You know, 
Hello, Corey from Box Scholar here. Thank you for difficult for you. You just can't do that. Well, then play hands alone. Play only the right hand. And then the left hand. Dot com. Yep, so the point I want to make here... Hi, Alex. <laughs> How are you? We already had some fun here. I'm talking mainly about sight reading. Uh, not the, you know, kind of most interesting stream. Obviously, it would be nice if I play something and so on. But... Um, this is hopefully a little bit a kind of resource and me sharing what I think about this topic. But and we heard the samba by Ilya already. <laughs> he was also here. But uh, what I want to say with this, with the bus scholar here, what his main work, I think, in the book is, and this is quoting him basically, because he, uh, I saw this in a video, uh, at some point I followed this, what he did here. He uh, how do you say, transcribed or wrote um, the Bach chorales, I think 150 of them, at increasing difficulty level, which are like, you know, like here one system or two systems long. So just very little snippets of a demonstration how um, harmonic progressions and the kind of chorale thing in Bach time works. And the exercise here is to go through um, the chorales in these difficult, in, in these different difficulties, up to the point where you can't do it anymore, and go through the book and increase your knowledge in how a chorale works, basically, and also learn how to use both hands at the same time and things like that. So I think he he does here the same thing that I'm talking about. You learn, you get better at sight reading by playing a lot of chorales because then in your brain you know ah yeah okay now I know a little now I basically know how chorales work at some point. If you do this for some weeks, um, every chorale is different, but then you're like okay I know the tonic has to come now or the dominant ha should be here or you just get a feeling of how the music works. And this, I think you cannot uh, you can apply not only to the chorales, but you can apply it to waltzes in general, or to nocturnes, or baccaroles, or whatever, you know, to all kinds of genres. So, um, this book helps, maybe, probably, to sight read, but what you can also do is just um, look at the... And Ali, by the way, we, we have been in your... Uh, I demonstrated your page also. Because your page is excellent for children's music, right? Um, or, I mean, not your your page really, but uh, where you do a lot of contributions. But so what? You know, I'm fine. I was about to go to bed, but I'll put it off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't know if I will stay so long um, here. The the idea was not to stay for ten hours here, but just to share a little bit my ideas. But I know that your channel really is a good source for children's pieces. And we are talking here really about children's pieces because we have sets of pieces with increasing difficulty where many pieces represent a certain style of music. Reading syncopation. Of beats. Yeah, that's maybe another point. Mm. I don't know about a specific set of pieces for syncopation right now, mm. but yeah, that's another thing I would have to think. Pieces specifically for aligning both and um, what what has been done for that is, of course, Czerny's studies. He wrote so many etudes for this and this and this and this technique, you know, but. On the on the one hand, most of the time they are quite quite hard, rather hard, and um, they are only these Germany pieces. You know, maybe there is you find three pieces for uh, off beats stuff. So it would be cool to have like a list. Okay, this is here for syncopations. You, um, check out these sets of pieces here, and <laughs> I mean this is where all the work basically is to find all that stuff and have. Um, these lists of pieces, but since I'm not writing a book, I'm not doing that, but this is just a brainstorming here. Have you tried any classical improvisations such as Partimento? Is Partimento a YouTube creator or...? Ah, 
Ah, Partimento is composer or no? I, I I have never heard that word to be honest, so I don't know. Partimento, type of teaching piece. Interesting. No, I have never heard of that. So I would have to go through into that myself because. Hello and welcome to EarlyMusicSources.com. My name is Elam Rotem, and today, together with our 18th century specialist Sean Curtis, Tatimento Fuchs. Now, while some Neapolitan maestri were mostly interested in nice gallant melodies and fancy keyboard figurations, others, like Nicola Sala, were more focused on old-style counterpoint, and included many contrapuntal and sometimes fugal hints in their partimenti. Let's see. In this partimento, Sala uses a special symbol to mark for us where the subject, which opens the piece, should appear in the realization. If we examine each instance, it's quite... Yeah, very detailed analysis. Um, yeah, so this seems to be useful for not really romantic music, but a little bit, a little bit older music. Um, but generally, the question of does improvisation help to increase your sight reading, I would say it helps. Um, because if you sit down at the piano, you know, and let's say you just want to play something that sounds good, then you will automatically be forced to make decisions on what harmonies you choose, on what kinds of melodies you choose, what rhythms you choose, and all your choices will be related to your knowledge of music that you have gathered already. And by having that thought process of asking yourself, why does this work? Why does this not work? Um, I think you can also kind of enlarge your knowledge of music um, by yourself without even playing so much music. Um, because you will learn, okay, this works, you know, if I play C minor and then I play G minor, I don't know, it sounds nice. So you have already this bracket, this little, you know, s snippet in your head. And by playing 20 pieces where they use that, you will also maybe learn, okay, um, this this fourth um, thing, how is it called? The subdominant, but in minor works. Um, we're given the bass and you improvise right hand. This is very, very interesting. They should do that in music schools, definitely. Or Golden Visor. Okay, there was some comments here. Advice for choral music and polka, both styles have somewhat of a manageable degree. Choral music, I've also never heard of that. Choral... Ah, yeah, it's a Brazil kind of style, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, that's even a rhythm, basically, okay. Hi, everybody, let's learn to play Where's some show. I have a few... Four, one, two, three, four, one... Like, if I'm honest, stuff like this, I'm also really bad. <laughs> when I play uh, tango, I mean, tango is kind of okay, but this stuff here, bossa nova or things like that, phew, I'm so slow sight reading. I'm really bad at this, so I can't uh, help a lot with that because I am not good at improvising. I'm not good at this kind of having the groove super in you inside so this is uh, also where i struggle so maybe learning this kind of stuff is indeed very useful for the rhythmical knowledge oh people use this rhythm this rhythm this rhythm this rhythm so when i have a piece with a high rhythm you know i play something from scriabin or from whatever and then he feels like he uses a funny rhythm and then you're like hey i have heard this in this brazil thing which i played some time ago so if you've only played Chopin, mozart beethoven and you're super perfect about it you will have problems then with playing um, you know something like this or jazz or whatever uh, okay jazz no bad examples too general but um, I'm just, you know, this is, I hope my theory is clear at this point that by listening to a lot of music, playing a lot of music, and what I mean by playing a lot of music is to really make the decision to say, okay, I know that this or this set of pieces is um, a set of pieces which is at my difficulty level. Again, I refer to, where was it? I refer to this album of Soviet Soviet's children music or going to IMSLP and searching for um, 
al albums of children's pieces of, of house music and things like that and then downloading the first book here for example and then saying okay i have my goal i want to go through i want to do this for an hour a day or half an hour a day where i go through these pieces which these should be let's even look this is the first book this should be really easy hopefully this should be now really at a beginner's level so you say okay i want to play a lot of music so i check out these kinds of pieces I go through them. If I can play both hands, then I just go through the hands individually and then try to play both. And um, just be acquainted with a lot of different music. So here again. Yeah, so this is here also not the easiest piece in the world, but you know, okay, we have three flats. It starts with an F sharp and um, we are li left a little bit in the uh, in the unclear what the tonality is here because yeah is this a major or is it f sharp minor so maybe it's f sharp minor right and then i play start to play the right hand here if i know the scale of f sharp minor really well then it's gonna be easier for me but if not then i have to figure out these notes and then I play this, and then we can have some time to play the left hand. And then here we have to align the li left and right hand here. Um, and then we have here an E sharp, a little bit unusual, and so on. And so I go through this, and then I go through the pieces. Okay, so this is also here really not that easy. Um, the Russian pieces, or Soviet pieces, I should say, are sometimes a little bit funny, uh, what they expect. But, you know, look at this. How many pages does this have? Can I see this? Uh, 116. So you have, look at this. I can just go somewhere and it just looks very good. Like, interesting, nice music. This is also pretty hard. If something is like very, very hard, too hard for your level, then you can just skip it, you know, why not? Whatever. And then you go to this maybe here and just try to play this. And I think I get what you meant, the line between scheme and is more blurry. Yeah, of course. Um, this is a question about jazz, which I'm not really talking about here, but... Um, I think the way, let me just read the comment, we are past the prior just writing, people haven't really found new stand -up. Yeah, I cannot really talk about that. I'm not in, I don't know that much about ja jazz, so I won't maybe comment that. But I have the following example here. And um, being able to sight read well, I would compare it basically to something like exploring a cave where um, you go in the cave and then you have different halls and the halls represent different eras of music in my example here and for example let's say you enter the, the you know the classical hall the classical hall of music and if you are completely new to music you've never heard anything classical you've never played anything classical you're in the same situation as going into that cave and seeing absolutely nothing so everything is dark, you're tapping in the blind. If you want to play something classical now, you have to go literally note by note, and you have no idea what's going on, no feeling for anything, and it's going to be just very hard. Um, if over time you have decided to listen to some classical music, you know, whatever, symphonies, piano sonatas, music, you go, you go to concerts, or just start to play at some basic, basic level, like divertimento, easy pieces and then you proceed with that over time over weeks and months then it's like in this cave there will be you have set your posts light posts and it's starting to get lit a little bit more and more and um, if you have a certain amount of light in there and you go to something new which is still dark you have seen already a little bit from the cave you know so you can kind of a little bit anticipate 
how that part of the cave will look like will look because of how what you have already seen and then you you light it up which represents okay studying the piece and then you might have still have trouble to study the piece or it might have been easier or you know whatever but um, at some point if you have forced yourself to not be stuck with playing Mozart 17th piano sonata absolutely perfectly and if you have to do that you you have to do it you know but if you're just playing for fun like I do this is literally my hobby you know I um, I don't care about no one <laughs> I just do what I want you know I play I look everything up this is a hobby then I can say to myself no I uh, neglect professional and that's why I always say that I'm an amateur because I say to myself I stand to that that this is my hobby and I want nobody can take the fun away from me from pia playing piano you know so um, I want to keep the fun of playing nobody can take that away from me so I say to myself so what for me for me the fun just dies if I have to be stuck with one piece for months because I made a little mistake in measure 273. I don't I don't give a concert or I don't, you know, earn money with that. Um, so I say, okay, I don't care about that. If I played a piece and made 17 mistakes, I can um, ignore that in the end and feel like, hey, I played this quite nicely and I liked how it sounded. So I make the decision, I rather want to play today a couple of new pieces, which I try to kind of side read, try to play. Of sometimes it just doesn't work; it's too hard. Okay, but I tr I played it a little bit. Now I made it a little bit warm, and the next day, and and let's say I play ten pieces, you know. So let's say seven pieces. I may I played them a little bit. I made them a little bit warm, and then three pieces. Let's say from the three rem other pieces, two pieces were just too hard. And one piece I actually already could side read, you know. So we have seven pieces which are uh, a little bit, a little bit still hard. But I played them a little bit, understood a little bit what they do. Two pieces were just completely too hard, so I say, okay, whatever, I don't care. And the one piece was so easy, or I just, I my synapses worked so nicely that I could play it. So now I'm left with seven pieces. So if I want to kind of play ten pieces a day. I have now room for three new pieces, but when I play these ten pieces, I have already the seven pieces from yesterday. And since I have already played them, of those seven pieces, some of them will also be at the point where I say, okay, I'm now at 80% of what I can do, or 70-80%. It would take now a long time to get to a perfection level, so they go out of my stack, you know? And then... Um, from those seven pieces, maybe two leave my stack because I am done with them and then I have five left. But remember, I had three new pieces. So of the three new pieces, let's say two go in my stack and one was too hard, so it goes out. So whatever, you know, um, I can make images and demonstrate that easy more easily. But what I'm just saying here is that if you play a lot of pieces in parallel at your level, again, you know, it can be 10 pieces, but maybe all 10 are quite easy, but it's no problem because that's maybe you're just your level or they are a little bit harder and so on and so forth. Um, but you will get this progress, you know, at some time, if you play them for one week from those 10 pieces, if they are at your level, some of them you will say, okay, I can kind of play it now, you know, I got the piece. So then they can leave this stack of uh, pieces. And then you have again a little bit more room for new pieces. But the other pieces which were harder than that, which you haven't finished, you can still keep and play and play and play. Up to the point where you feel like, okay, now I could play it to my mother or something. <laughs> something like that. Or to my neighbor, you know, they have no, no real idea about music, but they kind of just think it sounded kind of nice. You know, kind of this kind of thing. So I think this is where the fun is really there. If you just get eager to discover a lot of new music. This is how it worked for me. When I finished my master's thesis 2017, I um, uh, basically discovered IMSLP. I didn't really know what this is. 
and I was completely just wow. I don't have to play what my piano teacher says. I can just pick something. That was for me crazy. Because I thought, okay, what my piano teacher says, whatever, I have to play it. And then you get used to that, you know, and then you don't care. But if you know that the internet has everything out there because of amazing people who who um, did the work of going in libraries, of scanning everything, editing, uploading, caring about that, and you can just download it, then what you only have to do is free your mind about ah uh, i want to play something from brazil or from german today germany or i want to play play something romantic or i want to play something from shostakovich or whatever you know you can just type it in and find something and um then i think really the fun starts um and it will not work that you can immediately play everything because sight reading is really I think a process which just takes long time to be better at that but I'm pretty sure that you will not increase your sight reading if you stay stuck with Chopin's Scherzo number one because it's such an amazing piece and it is an amazing piece but if you're stuck with that and only play that one like let's say you play two hours a day and you play that one one hour and fifty because you're like oh I really want to play that and then the other 10 minutes, you you say, okay, I, I make my little side reading thing, you know, of of sitting down 10 minutes and dragging yourself through Hannon, or I don't know, you know, whatever side reading. So I think this, it works better for your side reading if you do what I said, like checking out these children's music books from Soviet or from IMSLP and things like that, or what other people wrote this um, Partimento, if you're more interested in this era of music, so this will work. Why have you stopped broadcasting live piano? Um, I will do it, but I um, didn't feel like it recently, because if, yeah, I mean, it's, it's whatever, but I felt like the channel is not really, not really going so well. Um, and then I didn't feel motivated enough, to be honest, because um, I don't... If I even just think a little bit about how much work and part of my life I put into the channel and see basically what I what I get as, as financial reward and things like that, then it just come, it, I feel like I want to delete the channel. So I don't do that and I just do what I want. And I want to just... Because live streaming, the problem is... <sighs> If I live stream, I always have a lag. I have uh, because I, on OBS I cannot do without lag, so I have the stupid 50 millisecond lag, and then uh, the camera blah 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 blah. You know, so it's stress for me, and I don't like stress when I go home after work, so that's why I didn't do it. But there is no other real reason about that. <sighs> and um, most professional amateur. Well, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> But, um, yeah. So I have talked a lot now. And um, in the end, it's about the practice of practicing scales, practicing harmonic progressions, and simply playing um, these sets of pieces. And the next step, because this stream, the goal I think here is not that uh, this is a complete video on everything about sight reading. This was just some basic thoughts which helped for me because you know I have to understand that what I can share here is my experience, what helped me, what helped for my sight reading. And uh, please check out other people and everything on YouTube. Just type in sight reading and whatever, you know, check everything out because it might be just different and it might be even someone else has their story which works much better for you. But if I look at my story, then I make the logical conclusions that the stuff that I said seems to work for sight reading. Because when I get a new piece, then I can play it immediately because it looks similar to something I've already played if I'm if I just say it easy like that <sighs> I see very big talent other career I mean I thought about doing the music career but people um, 
said that it's dangerous because of the um, because of the um, competition. And I'm really thankful, actually, with uh, uh, with that because music. I really enjoy the fact about it that it's my hobby, and that I um, can decide myself what I want to play. If I want to give a concert, if I want to do this or that, and no, not that somebody else decides music-related things are about me. And this independence is one of the small independence independences that I have in my life, because I'm really not the kind of guy who starts a business, who decides to go through the world and what I just like to clock in at work, do what my boss says, and really try to do it as good as I can. So I'm more that kind of person. But regarding music, I have really a free mind. And I listen to all kinds of different stuff on YouTube. And um, so I really enjoy that I have the freedom there. Do your work colleagues know? No, I mean, nobody cares about music at my work. Nobody plays anything. Um, at one point, I gave a concert in my university at my work. And it was said that I have the Gamma channel. But uh, I had the feeling nobody, like I gave a concert, I played the Kaminat piece, the Arabesque, I, ple I played Soviet pieces and everything. I played one hour at the Christmas party, you know, and then I brought my keyboard, which I used from my home. I brought it to the university. I took it back to my office and we went up the stairs and my colleagues were walking next to me <laughs> and they, they didn't even say anything like nice playing or nice or cool interesting they literally they didn't say nothing and i like my colleagues you know but that's how much they don't care about really piano music or things like that so that's very unfortunate obviously for me because i would like to be able to talk about actually i have one colleague which is not really a colleague he's more of the it it guy but he's very invested into classical perform he studied music and I have had lots of discussions with him about ah, oh, uh, what do you think? How does Grigory Sokolov play this piece by Bach? Or uh, who is the best interpret of the Chacon or this or that? So I always really enjoy the discussions with him. I feel I'm too left because in music, I want to be an economist. Seventeen, start college. Yeah, you know, honestly, Corona showed to us that having a job where you don't depend on something like concerts is pretty nice. <laughs> um, I had discussions with my, my piano teacher from back in the day, and for him it was such a hard time. And I think you can ask everyone who... I mean, you just couldn't give concerts. You could not earn money with concerts because the state said, no, you're not allowed to give concerts. So, you know... I uh, just could go to work normally at my university, in my office. I could make a coffee and just get the money on point, you know, from the from my work. So that's definitely, I think, a big advantage. And I also never thought about being something like Yuja Wang or Lang Lang or, you know, whatever, uh, Daniel Trifonov. Um, at some point in my life, I went to, I, I, I did a lot of competitions and things like that, but I never had the feeling that um, I'm that good, you know, so because I'm also, and that's when, what, what I mean when I say I'm lazy, sometimes I went to competitions and I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even sometimes study all measures of the piece because I thought, yeah, I'm going to just side, kind of side read through that measure it's so annoying i never figured out how to play the fingers and i never thought about th fingering so uh that's of course horrible i was maybe 16 17 at that time but um i had just a mental block where i just couldn't sit down and you know learn everything so nicely so that's why my whole way in my life went to this whole kind of side reading youtube thing because that is so nice for me to not have to play a piece perfectly um and that's maybe that's why it's maybe edgy a little bit when i talk about this stuff like that because m many of you or you people have to have to play something perfectly for this or that or the concert or this but i don't have to do that anymore because i had a time where i did have to do that 
but I don't have to do that anymore. And so I have now the full freedom of um, playing performances with mistakes and it's no problem. And having it on, on my uh, PC here, <sighs> where it's in the background right now, but where I can uh, edit the mistakes is extremely useful. It's very time efficient. If I have a piece which is five minutes long and I made three mistakes, yeah, what do you do in the audio recording? You have to play everything again, I guess. But I can just edit the three mistakes, you know, foop, 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 one note up, one note down, a little bit quieter, because my trashy, stupid keyboard played some stupid stuff, which I didn't want. That's another factor, by the way. Uh, in my head, I get the idea, but to get it out of the keyboard is another thing. If the keyboard doesn't do it, I'm like, I'm going to edit that because I am just trying my best. If I would have a proper piano, I could do it immediately. But um, everything is just working so nicely for that. But anyway, FL Studio here, you can you can see it in the background. Um, I think I'm going to stop very soon, so I'm not going to play here. The idea was to maybe go through pieces and uh, but I mean I have done that in recent live streams and I have never had the feeling that anyone cares people say oh play this play that play this and then I played it and you know uh, I can give my thoughts about sight reading these pieces concretely and then saying okay my problem here is this my problem here is that how do I circumvent that this would be another way to approach the sight reading Being a professional is not only sun, <laughs> not at all. Like for me, it doesn't look like sunshine and rainbows at all. For me, it, sound, it looks like completely terrible. My understanding is that someone throws 10, 10 pieces at your desk and says, you have to be able to play that next week. And that would be horrible for me. That would be horrible. If I had a college like that, I could hang out with him for hours. Yeah, man. <laughs> if we meet at somewhere, then let's uh, let's have a talk about music, definitely. That would be really cool. I have the Kavai VPC one. And for the price, it's really good. It's $1,500 or something like that. For the price, it's uh, good. But obviously, I have a very high standard or a high expectation of what I want to put out on my channel. So it's it's not sufficient sometimes. Really, it's not working so nicely, and then it's really annoying. Improviso, Ernesto, not so that I wanted to have many come. Okay, let me check out if I can find it somewhere. Um, maybe it's on Pianophilia. To log in. Um, not so that. Composers from South Africa, excluding Brazil. Uh, music of Brazil, right. Um, okay, uh, maybe I just not saw that. Improviso. Ah, there is even a separate thread, only for Ernesto Nazareth. Uh, or is it? No. Ah, oh, sorry, no, it's just the title of this thing here. Constructions. Isn't Natsa that... Yes, I you know, that's what I saw at some point. Natsa that, I think all pieces are on this page here. You can download and... Um, the automatic translation is very stupid here. It doesn't help at all. Okay, here. Improviso. There it is. Estudo para concerto partitura original. Yes, very nice. That's what I remember. I know him from this page because I thought that's very... Oh, it's even dedicated to Villa Lobos. From Villa Lobos, I remember playing the root poema... <laughs> I annoyed my parents and my 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 neighbors a lot. I I really studied rude, or rude poema or the ru, rude poema whatever you call how you pronounce it. I practiced it a lot. I practiced it really a lot. Um
Yeah, found looks in it doesn't look so easy. So this looks really like an e Poema de Rua I mean street Ah okay. Because root is fits to the character of the piece, so I always thought it uh corresponds to that. But yeah. Uh, I think I'm I'm not going to do the stream much longer. Uh, I could kind of try to side read this, which would make a studio a studio para concerto. Um, yeah, I mean I can maybe just do that, but then I think I'm going to definitely end it. <sighs> so Ernesto, I have my tablet here. Ernesto Nazareth. What do we have else? 100, 150 Dot BR, Brazil. Ah, there it is. Mm, acervo, acervo, opera, pieces. So. Improviso here. And here, okay. Have you tried making original? Yeah. Have you Chrome Hell, Leonard, Just Blues? No, I don't know that. Uh, but uh, this topic is I really want to improve on jazz knowledge, on jazz improvisation. So this is definitely I'm going something I'm going to do more in the future. And it's the greatest unknown composer. <laughs> Yeah, don't talk about the electronic music, it's uh, stupid. But original compositions, I composed something back in 2017. But, um, I, I mean, I have a lot of ideas and I would like to have the discipline to sit down and write it up, but I haven't I haven't, haven't done so. So what I will now try to do um, is sight read this. And I think I can even sight read this and... Um, you know, talk about it at the same time. So, wait a sec. Can you hear something? Is the piano on? You can write yes or something. Then I know that the sound is working. Okay, okay good. So, uh, it's very uncomfortable here with my funny headset but and I'm sitting not perfectly at the middle of the piano because of that but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm not sure if I believe the score. Okay, uh, repeat. have to jump to bracket two now.
Pretty astonishing, we played almost without errors, top-notch side reading. Yeah, I'm side reading this. You rent this room. Yes, I rent it. Let's go on. We have E flat minor now. Something is weird here. Look, this is another thing. Sight reading breaks down if I'm not even convinced that the score is true. Then uh, I have to question everything and then I cannot sight read anymore. Okay, re repetition. Very nice. beginning again. Something like that. Very nice piece. Uh, yeah, so thanks for the suggestion. <sighs> We're talking about... I just side read this piece here <laughs> that you can see here. And from it sounds exactly like it. Cool, side reading, side reading this piece. Yes, exactly. I was side reading this. And um, the problems here for me were this one, the left hand here. Can I mark this? Not really, but the left hand here was really <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't read this in time. And then um here this chord was a little bit hard to read too, but apart from that, you know you know I can for example tell you why this wasn't so hard for me to side read. Because the right hand here reminded me just a lot of Schubert's Opram 2. You know, you know the um <laughs> this one here <laughs> and so on you know this one it really reminded me a lot of that so i could get warm with that piece pretty quickly although we have something different tonality different pattern but because i knew the schubert piece i felt like ah, i'm basically Sorry, you know, I'm basically playing the Schubert piece here. 
and that helped for me to not fiddle around with every node itself basically and then the harmonies were just super standard harmonies so I had no problem really to figure this out and then here the harmonic progression and the first time it was a little bit hard but then the second time I already also figured it out and about this passage I'm still not sure <laughs> if this is correct here but um, yeah I will I think I will play this on my channel it sounds really nice I really like it very cool piece but um, yeah I think this will this will do for now how long am I going I don't know <sighs> about two hours or something um, so this was more an experiment you know uh, because um, it seems difficult to find really interesting stream topics except for literally me but even if I just sit down and live stream to be honest I don't have a feeling that really a lot of people care and then for all the work I have it doesn't seem to work out for me so nice I mean if I have 30,000 people on the channel uh, you know if even 1% would be interested then 300 people should be there but most of the time 20 people are here and so I'm like okay I don't know then I can just pay and spend the time of making a video. Like, honestly, that's not worth it for me. He has amazing style if you want. Caprice, Caprice with waltzes. Yeah, I checked out. Act I don't know why I didn't play his music. I'm really surprised because I, uh, I checked out almost all pieces on the opera here, on this page here. Come on, here, this one. Valsa Lenta, Dor Secreta. Secret Door? Or? This is such a cool page. They just upload everything from him. Oh, this looks nice. This is very cool. Okay, le you know what? This is the last piece. I'm going to side read and then that's it. So, can I do more? If I make it smaller, then it's not gonna work. When everyone who cares is also broke. Yeah, I don't know. So, you know, I'm just not gonna I'm just not gonna care about it and then it's not a problem. <laughs> so door secret here on Opera. So door secret. And again I'm uh, sight reading this. Never played this before or heard it. I'm sitting really a little bit bad, but should hopefully work. Okay, so we have Lento. So before we side read, we of course check out the tonality, we check out the speed, we check out the measure. So we have vaults, three quarters of course, we have apparently G minor, and we have a Lento, right? So in molto sentito. So I would just go like this. I hate these stupid Arsenio shit 
things uh what does it mean <coughs> there's a new alcohola uh i literally don't know what to do right now i don't know okay i just keep going Una corda. Okay, there you have it. So I side read this piece. Thank you. Should be Brazilian as friend from the beginning. I never memorize. I'm very bad at memorizing. So in this stream you learned everything. <laughs> Sorry, you learned everything about me that I'm not good at. I'm bad at side reading. I'm bad at improvising. I'm bad at uh, not at side reading, but I'm bad at uh, memorizing. I'm bad at um, improvising. Um, especially jazz, and I'm bad at playing fugues and other things, but <sighs> very cool piece, great. So for me it was really a success. Not so that definitely going to play a lot uploading era. You know what would be funny if I make like a one hour long video of only his pieces. Um, the problem is I like I I would do that, but I have the feeling that just from the money I get by that, and sorry to say it's so stupid like that or from the whole, you know, rewarding thing, not the money, even the clicks and the likes and everything. If I put out a one hour long video, which takes me 12 times, no more even, let's say 15 times the work, do I get 15 times more also reward? No, I get like the same. Two times if I'm very lucky, so okay. Why should I put everything in a one hour video then? This is just the way it works, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, if you think put a nice title. Yeah, and you know what I do normally is I play the pieces themselves and then I make a big video with everything. Where do I have the thing here? You know, like I did with Rebikov. Check it out. Where is it? All Rebikov so far. And you can see this video is nine hours long here. Nine hours. And I put everything from, from Rebikov in one video. He lost his hearing, just like Beethoven. Brazilian Beethoven, interesting. <laughs> marketing, yeah, that's a good idea. Did you, didn't you say you do something like marketing? Where were you? You're 17 and you do economist. Ah, I see that you're going to be good. What made you start music in first place? What do you mean by start music? Um, so in my family, nobody plays really music, but um, I was, because of my mother, um, acquainted with with touching a piano, you know, not really even playing piano, by uh, some kind of demonstration. And I always liked the feeling of pressing down the keys. So I thought that maybe playing piano would be nice. I've had courses in my school and so on about generally about music where I learned how to clap correctly and things like that. So I had a kind of musical, a little bit of a musical background, but from not, not from home or from anything else. And um, I don't know, my piano teacher 
saw that and I could plow through the beginner books pretty quickly already. So my sight reading was already um, kind of there, but yeah, full of sense and logic was so much better. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I really can't explain why in this case I cannot e not only even sight read it, but already put in a f full interpretation. Some of my videos on YouTube, I've literally clicked on the recording button and played it sight read and uploaded it. Uh, which I don't do anymore, really, be but because I don't like that. Because, uh, But you know what the advantages of sight reading? If you sight read and then you notice at one point in the piece, you're like, oh, what do I have to play here? You know, or what a surprise. I'm surprised. If you sight read and you're surprised, remember that this is not a weakness, that's a strength. Because then you know every listener will also be surprised at that moment. So by your natural reaction in the sight reading process, you already know, okay, hey, let's embrace that and play it, but a little bit in a more polished way, in a more logical way, also in the concert, because everyone will be surprised and then you can kind of anticipate that. So that's what I also like about having, like when I have these kind of sight read performances, what I like about it is in my ears, it clearly often doesn't sound like a, you know, professional recording. Because professional recordings, they're so super polished, they're so... They just sound like a professional <laughs> recording, you know? But when I listen to my uploads, and some uploads are not good, like, I don't want to be too loud, but often I have the feeling it sounds like the way I like it to hear, it sounds like a little bit more interesting and intimate and um, amateurish if you want, but it just sounds like how I feel it. I don't know how to describe it, but this is why I like it. Conversational format, you and time we ask you stupid questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sight reading was just kind of a way to do it, but I can also just do hangout streams or something like that because I'm having fun, definitely. So I've heard worse professional recordings. That's what struck me most is phrases better than sight reading. Yeah. I don't know. Um, to me, this is really a absolutely peak romantic music and I've played so much of that that um, if I want to exaggerate, playing the first measure, I have kind of an idea of how the piece will completely be. Of course, obviously, except the second B section. The B section can be whatever, but the first part. And that's honestly why I often don't record pieces like that because I'm afraid that it will be too boring, but it's hard for me to evaluate, uh, is it interesting for people in, if I play stuff like that. <sighs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks for the compliment. And yeah, I'm not really, um, you know, I'm not, uh, I mean, European, not yeah. But I am I have given some, you know, piano teaching thingies. I don't do that anymore. But I would love to do that because it also helps for me to, um, you know, to relate to common problems. Because I think a piano teacher has to adapt to every student completely individually because every student has their own problems. Like, if you take me... I can play octaves very well or kind of well, but thirds, you know, sequences of thirds, I'm very terrible. And maybe the other person, they can do this well and they can do that not so well. So we have to really adapt to that. And if someone has like problems in, let's say, these kinds of four techniques, what a piano teacher would I be if I just only give him pieces which use only that? <laughs> the, the, the student will feel completely stupid at some point. So we, I would then also give pieces which really support the technique he's good in to make him feel like, yeah, that's what I'm good at. And I want to also get better at the other things and blah, 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 you know, so. Uh, but when you compose and spill it, you can actually sound like mixed player sound. Like yeah, yeah, that's true. So here, the CFX thingy that I used, this produces really a nice sound. So I can um, adjust microphone levels, I can adjust the lit position, open, half, closed, I can adjust your various things and I can even adjust a fake reverb, you know, this is now small orchestra hall, 
but I can also make jazz club. Then it sounds like this. So a lot more, a lot nearer, or we can do, I don't know, cathedral. This is gonna sound horrible. Anyways, uh, what do you say? The sequence of thirds were solved with two hands and some performance were excluding the left hand chords. Uh, I mean, just take the Chopin Opus 25 number 6. You know, then obviously you cannot use both hands. It's just not impossible. Because you have stuff in the left hand, of course. So... Uh, number nine. No, wait. Number six. Yes, in G minor, G sharp minor. Like if you have this, and I studied this piece a lot at some point, but yeah, I just get. Do you know this caricature of the beginning here, where the notes go away <laughs> more to the end of that? They go like their own direction because you know if you play this, it goes like you start very nice, like and then <laughs> it goes like that. Oh, I have the stupid, stupid cathedral thing, uh, reverb, which is not very nice. But anyways, yeah. Snowing, I don't know. No, I think not. It hasn't snowed at all here, actually. I'm surprised. Demo tools with reverb plugin. Demands a lot of slow practice. Yeah, maybe. Like, honestly, if we talk about this piece, I think literally anything anyone says here will be helpful to me because I'm so bad at uh, playing. And, m like, my main problem was when I played the Kapustin, um, <sighs> the Kapustin at you, number six, no, sorry, number seven, Intermezzo, which is such a nice piece, but in the end you get this da -da 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 -ra 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 -ra. and I always struggled really a lot with that. Um, yeah, this probably just takes a lot of practice, but I mean, at some point I could play this whole piece at a kind of r tempo and so on. I figured out the fingering. I mean, just look at that. It looks so horrible. <laughs> yeah, such a hard piece. He's really a decision man. List legend number one. Yeah, I don't know the legends that good, but let's see. De legend. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen that piece before. Okay, so far I don't see thirds, though. Really? Uh... Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, it starts. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and then we have this stuff. Yeah, this is definitely also something that he uses. Yeah. How many beers? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Do you think your knowledge of math helps with polyrhythms? I mean, polyrhythms is so rare that it doesn't really uh, matter a lot. Um, I think it doesn't help at all. Like mathematics has not really to do with polyrhythms. It's the same for everyone. You have to just learn how to subdivide the measure into the least. I mean, the only thing it helps is to know that you have to divide the measure into the um, least common multiple, like three and five. You need 15 because, you know, three is a prime number, five is a prime number, so you divide it by 15 and then you have, you know, each three and each five and then it correlates. On the book Music Composer for Dummy, it you notice that all the pieces you a lot use, a lot of repetition on the phrases. Interesting. I think I, I think I read this book at some point. I remember vaguely in my head going through a forest and reading that book. Uh, 15 years ago or something. <laughs> I've been impressed how early you've played polyrhythms. Can think of anything. I haven't had happened polyrhythms so often. Like two against three is no problem because I've done that just so often in my life. 
but five against three I have to sometimes uh, practice a little bit definitely I mean I cannot just randomly play the craziest polyrhythms just by that um, Chani writes that you have to get a feeling for kind of um, dividing very roughly when which part of the right hand like especially if you have like 26 against three or so you have to kind of instantly know okay around about this number of notes has to come here and that's what I try to do but obviously um, this is not the truth because the right hand always has a different subdivision necessary to it like a good example is the uh, Chopin ballet number one in the end I don't remember the notes perfectly how does it go like wait how does it go something like that you know and you cannot just go through like uh, but uh, you have to you think about like and then I think that's the way I phrase it but this helps for polyrhythms obviously so I think I'm a little bit done um, I think I'm gonna say th thanks for watching and um, I am gonna check out the comments and so some people apparently liked it um, it's definitely not yeah, I mean probably not going to happen regularly because it's just using a lot of time also and uh, stressful for me um, you know I'm not the kind of person to always be with a face cam and so on but yeah I hope it was fun and um, a little bit useful regarding sight reading so in the end my point as again it's a very simple point I really believe that um, playing a lot of pieces in your life by uh, because you can say yeah he just said play a lot of pieces how can I do that well also really by saying to yourself okay I'm going to not um, study every piece perfectly uh, I'm going to find sets of pieces like the album for the young um, or whatever other kinds of pieces like if I would write a book I would think about you know putting up lists of interesting sets of pieces which help you for this or for that for, for fugues for classical pieces for syncopation for this thing for the other thing for playing both hands at the same time and then just playing pieces playing 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 and listening to music and then you will um, you will at some point uh, ha have it easier in this cave of music that I explained before to anticipate the dark places by knowing a lot from that cave already by saying hey I have explored this before and this and this I know that the cave normally looks like this so if I go to this dark place like this Ernesto Nazza that piece I know the cave of romantic music pretty well at this point because I just spend so much of my time of my life to that you know so I can anticipate okay it will probably sound a little bit like this and then I can already even spend my CPU not even to playing the notes or rhythm or everything I, can, I have even CPU left for phrasing or interesting interpretation because yeah this cave is uh, explored for me so yeah that's what I can say about that all right next to you baby <laughs> no I don't think so good night you can listen to the BC left hand alone Ooh, yeah that's that sounds crazy <laughs> they're very interesting Let's say play grand. Thank you, Petya. Bye, Ita. Bye, Admirable Smithy. Have a nice evening. And yeah, thanks, Alex. Thanks for your work, really, uh, for scanning. I want to talk with you at some point. Really, w how much time do you spend scanning? Uh, you know, how many how many scans have you done? How does it work? I really want to know how this whole thing works for you. Um, but yeah, another another day. So, but I'm interested, <laughs> and I appreciate I appreciate your uploads on. It's not Rus comp uh, how do you call it now i think soft comp is the new name right i have to still remember the new name but um try to listen to as many pieces of your channel as possible right so see you next time